Welcome back, Shalligators. Well, we're a little late to the party. I am <laughs> talking about this news of Rebel Wilson and Jacob's, Jacob Bush's breakup. Say that five times fast, right? So we've talked about this couple before, um, how to like glow up and get the hot guy, you know, because he's hot, he's rich, he's young, he's got his own life going on. It's like he didn't need her for clout. So I, we were all like, oh, get him, Rep. Look at those abs. Look at that tan. Look at that yacht. Love it. But apparently she didn't really feel the same because evidently after like oh, oh quite a while of dating and being like on and off kind of before then apparently he's been obsessed with her since 2019 that's what sources are saying she blindsided him and dumped him via text message so it begged the question how do you break up with someone what's the right way what's the wrong way I have the answer. I'm going to identify the three steps to breaking up with someone in a way that's healthy, respectful, and most importantly, is going to stick. Because there's nothing worse than having to break up with someone and then do it again and again and keep on doing it because they're not getting the memo, you're not communicating effectively, or boundaries that need to be in place simply aren't. So we're gonna get into that. We've got some science-based stuff to talk about. But before we do, Shalentine's Day is coming. Rah! Shalentine's Day is coming. I mean, Valentine's Day is like a thing, I guess, but Shalentine's Day is something else entirely. We've got some videos planned for you. Perfect date night ideas. They're cheap, easy, and very tailorable to whatever kind of vibe your relationship has or whatever stage of dating you're in. Also, I'm going to give you six ways to not only deal with being single on Valentine's Day, but to actually make it an awesome time to be thankful you're single and to use it to heal maybe some past traumas and like issues you've had and step into the rest of the year your best self. So we're gonna be doing those two on YouTube starting tomorrow, but the rest of the Shalentine's Day content, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little spicy up in here. I asked you perverts what you wanted to see that's like not safe for work, like really nasty slutty topics that you know we love and you brought the heat. You brought the heat. So we are going to head over to Flays. It's our uncensored ad-free platform because YouTube will not let us talk about a lot of the stuff that we want to, stuff like that. But Flays will. So head on over to Flays. Sign up. It's fantastic. I do a video every week, either story time or like a like a sexy hookup video. And I'm just going to be doing like a Q&A with you guys. I'm going to be reading some of your submissions and answering all the questions, everything from like pegging and like fanny stuff to threesomes, girl on girl sex, everything in between. Food in the bedroom, toys. We got a lot of stuff. So head on over there. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of videos on Flays. And tonight, join me on XO Radio. It's our weekly radio show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, where I play some of my favorite songs with the topic, break down the meeting, talk about like what we can learn from them. This week in honor of Valentine's, Shalentine's Day, we're going to be doing my favorite hookup jams because there is an art to the hookup playlist, right? There is, because we've all been hooking up and like oh, the music's perfect and then some like weird song comes on. You've got Gangnam Style just blasting through the bedroom and you're like, this is great. So I'm going to tell you how to craft the perfect hookup playlist, which songs you should play when, because that's really crucial, and just talk about it in general. You can download the Station Head app for free, listen for free, and like I said, tune in tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be good. You guys can also call in, request songs, comment, and chat with me. It's super interactive, which is like super fun. Okay, Rebel and Jacob. So this is what sources are saying. Sources are saying that he's blindsided by this, super hurt, has no idea what's happening. Apparently they like talked all through the holidays. They went to Aspen together before the holiday. And then he wanted her to come to Florida to meet his family. And she was like, yeah, I don't know. I might be busy. That's British. Ah, I have a really good Australian accent. It's just hard to get into it sometimes. One of my friends, she's, a, she's an actress. And she does accents, like great accent. And she's like, for every accent, there's like a trigger phrase that you say, and it kind of helps your mind snap in. She said for Australian, it's Jennifer Lopez. Okay, there it is. Sorry, I can't go to Florida with you. I still sound like I had a stroke a little. I can get there, but it helps. Anyway, so Rebel was like very like ah, non-committal about going to meet his family. Now listen, you might hear the words Florida and family and picture gator wrestling or scratchers crystal you might picture that that's not jacob bush's family his family is the anheuser bush 
dynasty. I mean, he is dynastically wealthy. He also has his own line of beer or wine or fucking something. Who cares? The point is, he has his own thing that's going on. He has an incredibly successful family. This wasn't like, oh, come by the trailer park. Not that there's anything wrong with trailer parks. I actually would totally live in a trailer. I think be, I lived in a studio apartment in Brooklyn. How different could it possibly be, right? At least I have some sort of a yard. So she was like, mm, not really into it. And people were very surprised by this breakup. The the thing people aren't saying is, does she honestly think she can do better than him? Yeah, she can. Maybe. I don't know. He seems like a pretty cool guy. He's younger. She's 40. He's 29. Can you believe she's 40? I know. Crazy. She looks fantastic. And maybe, so sources were saying that it just kind of ran its course. Hmm. She is looking better than ever. She's lost like 70 pounds in the last like year or two. Like she's really gone for it. That's been her big focus. And I just, I couldn't help but think about all the times we want to plug in and be a therapist to guys, right? And what do I always tell you guys? There's actually no ranking in the army of Captain save -a There's no pension, there's no medals, there's no parade. It is a thankless job. Because when we fall into the therapist role with a guy, do you know what they do when they're fixed? You know what they do? They put a ring on our finger? No. You know what they do? They're like, thank you so much for getting me sober. Uh, I've met someone else, so bye. Pat on the head. And we're like, what? You might be thinking about couples like Haley and Justin. Like, Haley saved him. No, she didn't. Justin did save himself. He was on the road to redemption. He was getting his mind right before he went back to Haley. Okay? She didn't kick, pull him kicking and screaming, give up everything she had. She's like, Come correct or don't come at all, my dude, right? That's the way to do it. Why are we talking about this? Maybe Jacob was kind of therapist for Rebel. Maybe he was like weight loss cheerleader and trainer and you can do this. And then she glowed up and she's like, thank you, I don't need you anymore. And he was like, what? Maybe because we say this about guys, that we cannot be a reminder, a human reminder of their faults, their shortcomings, their trauma, and their past. Because if they've truly glowed up and remade themselves, they're going to want to get rid of their past. They're going to start fresh. And that means casting us out too. Maybe that was the dynamic with Rebel and Jacob. I don't know. I also had this theory that like he dumped her, but then his PR people went kind of on the offensive and tried to make him look like the victim. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that now that I say it out loud. In any case, it ended. And apparently, it ended via text message. Is this the right way to break up with someone? Is this sweet, conscientious? Is it healthy? Is it only going to lead to more feelings of misery? I think we can all agree that ghosting someone is the absolute worst thing you can do. However, however, we need to define the term, right? Breakup. Breakup means you were together. You were boyfriend and girlfriend. Or there was some sort of dynamic that merited a conversation. Breaking up is not, I went out on one Tinder date with this guy, we didn't vibe, so I feel like I have to give him closure. No, no, you don't. If you haven't slept with someone, I believe you can ghost them. I believe you can. This is assuming you haven't been talking to them for four months on Snapchat and being a complete fuck girl and stringing them along, or you've gone out on 11 dates and you haven't hooked up and you just want the free meals. No, that means you're a shitty person and well, you're probably gonna do something shitty, so okay. But I don't think we owe every single person we've ever had a dynamic with this like grand conversation. But you know if you do or not. When you listen in your heart, you know if you do. And we know that only girls who are listening to themselves, who are self-aware, who are looking to level up and be the best version of themselves are on this channel. So if you're watching this, you probably are in the situation where you do need to actually like give a legitimate breakup to someone. And as we know from being on the opposite end, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. So there's basically three parts to the perfect breakup. Because like I said, the worst outcome is that they don't get the memo. I wanna say up front that no breakup should contain qualifier words, none. Right now, I'm not looking for a boyfriend right now. I'm just so busy with school at this time. I just don't have the bandwidth now. All he's going to hear 
is that qualifier. Because when we're hearts broken, and when we want something different than what's happening, we look for any little loophole. Do you know how I know that? You guys, I, I literally talked to a girl in the nail salon yesterday. I hate it. Ugh. And she's like, well, I've been talking to this guy for like four months on Snapchat. And I was like, you're already done. Just we're, we can stop right there. She's like, but we went out and at the end of the date, he gave me a fist bump. And I was like, oh, my God. She's like, but you know what? I think that's really respectful that he didn't try to hook up with me. I was like, I don't. I'm not saying he's got to do anal right there in the parking lot, but he should at least give you a hug or a kiss on the cheek or a kiss on the mouth. Like, girl, it's not like you just met. You've been talking for months and he's giving you a fist bump. But this is the thing. When we want to see something the way we want to see it, we're going to twist facts to suit a theory instead of twisting a theory to suit facts, right? We have to try to look at things in the scientific method. And that means when we're trying to give facts to somebody, we cannot equivocate. We can't pussyfoot around it because that's all they'll hear and they will never get the memo and they're going to keep coming back. And then you're going to get like, I saw, who was in the background of your Snapchat? You're sending me mixed signals. And you're like, no, the fuck I'm not, Jacob. You're not listening to me. I've gone through this. So three parts of a breakup. Number one, make sure you are done before you say you're done, right? Because you're going to sit down with this person and whether or not they like know it's coming. So we can look at relationships and be like, things aren't great, but we probably don't know that like the executioner is right behind us. You know, we still think everyone thinks that they've got more time to figure out a relationship or a dynamic or make things better, or get back on track, blah, blah, blah. So the first natural thing, oh my God, I almost said your opponent, Oof. your boyfriend is going to say to you is, Kristen, you're just, you're making a snap decision. Like, just, let's just take some time and think about this. Like, let's just cool off. Okay. Like, I'm sorry. I know I was crazy at the bar last night, but let's not do anything rash. It is important you say, Kyle, I'm not being rash. I have thought about this. The incident at the bar last night was a factor, but it was not the only factor. I've been giving this a lot of thought and this is the conclusion I've come to. Okay. But you actually have to believe that. You're selling this, right? And if you're like, well, I don't know, you're right. I mean, you had a lot of jalapeno poppers and all those like weird purple drinks and I don't know. If you don't know, they're gonna latch onto that and try to talk you out of it. And again, this is gonna have to go on and on. And a break that, that could be one night is gonna take months, months, right? And just agony. And ironically, if you are dealing with someone who it's like, well, he's the right guy, but this is the wrong time. This is even more crucial that you cut it quick and fast, ice cold, because that shredding, that post breakup shred, the Snapchats, the drunk dials, why are you on Tinder? Who are you out with? Who the fuck is that girl? That shit is what ensures you will never get back together. Like ever. Because there's going to be so much festering resentment. There's going to be so much water under the bridge. And it's called a breakup because it's broken. There already are issues, right? So all you're doing is adding so much more. It's like having a trauma that's unresolved so you start to drink or do meth. Great. Now you have the trauma and the meth. So this is not good. So know that you're done and go in there with a clear head. I am done. There is nothing he can say or do to fix this. This isn't a bluff. This isn't a strategy. This also isn't something personal, but we'll get to that. We'll get, the, we'll get to that in a minute. So you got to go in there. This is the conclusion I've come to. Number two, have a conversation that is actually not a conversation. So <sighs> conventional wisdom says, do not break up with someone over text or email. Sit them down in person. Listen to me, that is not always the wisest option. First of all, it's not always the safest option. If we're dealing with someone who's volatile, disrespectful, violent, I mean, or just who's gonna make us, who's going to make us feel unsafe, however we might define that, we cannot treat a breakup with a healthy person the same way we treat a breakup with a lunatic. We talked about this in the abuse video that we just did about uh, Marilyn Manson and Evan Rachel Wood. Like you can't approach this and you can't approach them the way you would if it's like a gentle cognitive person. Sometimes in real life is not the best option. And just because society says you owe someone something, you don't fucking owe them your peace of mind and your safety. I've always said I'd rather be impolite and alive than a polite dead girl. 
And there's a lot of dead girls that said, it's okay, he just needs closure. No, the fuck he doesn't. And we talked about this in the abuse video. Like when you're dealing with a toxic or abusive person, you don't owe them a list of reasons why you're leaving. They know why you're leaving. They know. They just, they don't care. They see you as a possession. So if there is an element of that, absolutely don't do this in real life. And if you do, make it a very public place. I also, I prefer a text or email breakup. I honestly do. I, like if I'm getting dumped, I prefer it to be that medium because Otherwise, you feel kind of like a clown. Like, is there anything worse than like you're getting dressed up for a date and you picked up the house because they're coming over and you're like, hey, babe. And they're like, Kristen, we need to talk. And it's like, and then you have to try to hold it together and you never can. It's emotional and you're stunned. And then you feel like humiliated on top of being brokenhearted. I prefer the anonymity and the neutrality of text. I want to be able to curate the look, curate what I'm saying, because being dumped happens. Heartbreak happens. Being blindsided happens. Losing our dignity doesn't have to happen. We only lose our dignity in a breakup if we hand it to a man on the way out. Would you like me to call you every day? <laughs> oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'll do anything. Oh my God, I'll do anything. It's an anal. I'll do anal. No. I, when people have broken up with me over text, I'm like, thanks for letting me know. Good luck in the future. <laughs> because look, if he's bluffing, if he's just being a fuck boy, he'll be like, <gasps> She, she just is fine with it? Wait. If you really want a man back, that's exactly how you have to play it. Okay, bye. Thanks. You know what? We've been on the same page. Oh, good luck, babe. Let's get a beer sometime. Bye. What? It's the groveling that's unattractive. So I am fine with those means of communication for breaking up. But we should, if we're dealing with someone we've had long-term love with, if this is like a serious thing, you do owe them a conversation. But remember how I said it's not a conversation? Conversation implies duality. It implies reciprocity. You say something, then I say something. Conversations are, in essence, a negotiation of sorts. This is not a negotiation. This is a statement, right? This isn't um, uh, like a positional thing. This isn't a debate. This is, I am making a statement, which I've thought about. You know, I've reached this conclusion. And here it is. Now we move on to number three. Do not drudge up the relationship. What, Shallon? Come on. It's a breakup. Of course, of course you're going to talk about why you're breaking up. Nope. I've never been kinder to someone than when I'm dumping them. I've never been more forgiving than when I'm walking away. Because the decision's already made, honey. Verdict's in. Jury came back. I'm sorry, this is what it is. We don't need to rehash it anymore. I don't need to bring up the fact that you tried to fuck my friends at the bar. I don't need to bring up the fact that you vomited on the dog. I don't need to do that because I'm walking away. And truly, that not bringing up of stuff, the drudging up of the history, or even if it's not history, just the, the enumeration of all of their sins is going to give them the message, she's really done. She... Some rapper tweeted this. They're like, beware when your woman stops fighting with you. When she doesn't even care enough to fight. Silence is deadly. And man, isn't that it? And when I'm truly done, I'm pretty silent. I don't need to go over this again. No, nope. no, that's, you don't need to apologize. It's fine. I was at fault too. Okay, bye. And I'm not looking for a fight because a fight implies some sort of resolution. I don't need to know who's right or wrong because I'm out of this. This is no longer my circus, not my monkey anymore. You know, and we have to send that vibe. We have to send that message in order to get it through their head that this is not this is not viable anymore. Right. And then you go ghost. Then you go ghost and you tell them, like, look, I think it's unhealthy. We either mute or unfollow each other for six months. And ugh, this is this is what's hard. This is what's hard because we're so it's so tempting to put these qualifiers in. Like, maybe we can be friends someday. Look. If you're trying to go straight from dating to friends, you know what you are? You're a fucking coward. Don't do that shit. It's hurtful to the other person. We have all been on the receiving end of a guy who doesn't want to date us, but he doesn't want to stop hanging out with us. And we're like, I don't understand how you feel. You know, I feel like a fucking pussy. That's how he feels. He feels like a dude who's like, well, I don't want to give you, I don't want to like be responsible, but I'd love it if you kept giving me blowjobs. No. And we can't do that to other people either because it's just ego driven. It's cowardice and ego. And 
we have to be the bad guy and we have to be okay with being the bad guy. This dude who I just dumped, who I hurt, yeah, he might talk trash about me all over town. Not my circus, not my monkey. I'm okay with being the bad guy. I'm like the bad guy on the internet. Who cares? I don't care. And I don't want to hurt people. And I'm certainly not punitive or capricious with the people in my life. But I'm also not like, no, we can be friends and let's keep talking. Even though I probably do want to still be friends with them. I mean, you like them for some reason. And just because the romantic element didn't work out or lo the logistics aren't right, it feels so extreme so much like death and mortality, which is why we hate breakups, to just cast them out of our life completely. But you have to for a while. Friendship is neutral. This dynamic is not neutral, right? Your best friend isn't crying because she doesn't get to have sex with you. This dude probably is. So everyone needs to stop talking, stop stalking for a certain amount of time. A good rule of thumb is like, three months. That's usually about how long it takes us to get over something, right? Three to six months. Maybe it's longer. Maybe it's three to six years. Okay. But look, you're going to get over this way faster because you're the one who wanted out. So you have to be cognizant that he's not going to be ready to like, go grab a beer. You want to go horseback riding? He's still going to have a lot of feelings and you got to let that boy be. Okay, because otherwise you're a fuck girl and you're messing with someone's feelings. Then it's just going to create more mess for you. He's going to be like, Kristen, you, I don't understand these mixed signals. Why do you text me if you're just going to be going out with James? And to you, you're like, because I like you, but I don't want to have sex with you or we don't work anymore. He's not going to get that. And why would he? So you have to be okay with being the bad guy. But there's this phrase my mom always says, sometimes you got to be cruel to be kind. And truly, as many of us have been on the other side of like the mixed signals and the shredding and the situationships and the breadcrumbing, we all say the same thing. If he doesn't like me, why can he not just say that or just stop talking to me? Okay, girl, you got to walk it like you talk it then. Be the change in the world you want to say, right? Live, laugh, love. So if that is how you have not appreciated being treated, you cannot treat someone like this either. Even if you miss them, even if there were good times, even if they were useful to you. And it's like, well, I don't hate him. You know, I don't want to like never speak to him again. That's not relationships. You're either all in or you're all out. You are a, you're a boss, right? You're a job and you're firing your employee. Would you think it's fair that your boss was like, hey, no, I know we fired you last week, but we just like haven't seen you around the office lately. Do you want to come in for a few hours? No. Don't be a boss calling an employee you already terminated. Let it lie. Because again, if you do change your mind, he's going to respect that you respected his feelings. And you say this, like, look, I, the feelings are high right now. I don't think we should talk for six months. We can have a phone conversation July 1st. Until then, I'm, I'm going to unfollow you because, you know, it's hurtful to see you. And if you, this, we just don't need that. We just don't need that stimulus. If you want to unfollow me, block me, that's fine. But I think it's important to just let the dust settle if we want any shot of a friendship in the future, you know, because friendship is neutral. Say these things. Let him know. Not, it's not like I'm backing you because I hate you. And girl, do not follow him. It's crazy how much removing someone from your networks removes them from your mind. It, like it's why I finally recently blocked this fuckboy boy from my snap. And I'm like, oh, my God. And now I'm like, oh him and it's been like not that long but just removing that like spider waiting to jump out and bite you hugely helpful so i want to know your breakup script if you have like a, a go-to script employ it and let's talk about a script real quick just real quick just real quick i believe in kind lies you know, if this is something, if this is someone who you haven't been like in a deep relationship with, like you can't really say to your boyfriend a year of a year, it's like, <clears throat> I just, I'm still um, in love with my ex. Like, no, you can say that to a dude you've gone out with a few times. Like, you know what? Meeting someone new, it's really made me realize like I'm not over my ex and I shouldn't get into a relationship until I've, well, don't say until because that's a qualifier. I just shouldn't get into a relationship. See, I just wanted to add right now at this time, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. So it's okay to come up with these ego saving lies if it's just going to get it off your back. Because sometimes the truth is like, I am not attracted to you. We don't have any sexual chemistry. 
I don't like that you play Warcraft all day and have absolutely no ambition. Like, again, like you don't want to drudge up those things in a relationship. If there's something that either they can't or they won't change, like this is just who they are. Like, I'm sorry, you have really small hands and an equally small penis. Like, I just can't deal with this. You don't need to say that. You don't need to say it. Come up with something ego saving. Leave your suggestions in the comments because I would like to know. Always need that in your back pocket, right? I'm a single girl now. I, I know that this is going to come up. Like having to reject people, it's like small hand. You can't do it. Let's come up. Somebody make a Google Drive of breakup scripts <laughs> that we can share with each other. And like I said, get ready for Shalentine's Day kicking off tomorrow. We got some PG-13 stuff here on YouTube, but all the really good stuff is going to be over at Flays. I'll see you later, Shalligators. 